is there a subject called international relations international communication yes they are both so both are almost all equal international relations and international communications are like you know two sides of the same coin basically so let me let let me you know go with this particular thing you know i i don't want to you know bug you with you know the theoretical aspect of it but i'll give you more practical concept of what things work there is a simple saying saying anti if america sneezes the world gets cold why why do america sneeze and why do world get cold economic sanctions economic sanctions is it just economic sanctions multiple and it is one of the so whoever has actually coined that particular term you know it was first the french diplomat who actually said this particular thing and that holds to be true that holds to be true even today even today why because america is more powerful than any of the other countries and when it comes to international communication or international relations what happens is this is the dominance which actually make other countries fear the economic power the military power okay the the might actually you know that they have you know cultural you know the kind of you know uh, 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 superiority you know thing that they have over the rest of the world why do out of 198 countries right as per the un charter we have something around 198 countries which are actually been recognized out of this 198 countries tell me how many countries are powerful how many countries can actually launch their own satellites maybe around 10 okay maybe the new entrants would be you know saudi arabia uae where you know they actually having to you know prove to the rest of the world actually you know saying that even they can actually launch their own satellites and so on and so forth but what about rest of the countries i'll come to the media aspect later but you know let me talk about the international relations as such this is the most important concept okay even your domestic policies has something to do with the international relations and the international relations whatever it is whatever the decision that the us actually makes has a impact on the global countries or you know the rest of the countries half of the african countries or maybe you know take the entire african continent how many countries are powerful in that particular continent tell me one country which you can actually think of saying that you know this can challenge the dominance of something what happens when when actually you you try to you know challenge us what happens what happens when a particular country challenges the us dominance you are making a risk you are you are being imposed with the sanctions you know what is the highest what are the highest sanctions it's like you know runs into thousands earlier there were only three or four countries which were actually imposed by the sanctions but let me tell you in the international relations what happens is like you all have you know diplomats right right all the ifs guys who actually work day in and day out okay who tries to you know put our image at a global space whether it is you know uh, uh, who is who is the foreign secretary for us jay shankar and you have many diplomats right who are working day in and day out these are the guys these are the ambassadors who try to make you know things happen for us okay we will be like fighting day in and day out and we have almost all global presence in almost out of 198 countries we have a global presence around 160 to 170 countries that is the thing that india has most of the countries cannot afford it okay these are the guys who work day in and day out now here is the thing when you challenge us what happens when you challenge us you are supposed to be doomed that was the thing that was the thing earlier but there are countries which are actually trying to stop this particular dominance and who are those countries you can think of tell me few countries which can actually challenge the global dominance of us russia and china russia and china there was a time it was russia now it is not yet yeah, russia can still challenge and you know control and you know try to maintain the dominance militarily but not in terms of economic superpower okay at a given point of time we always heard about the cold war right the cold war between the 
US and the USSR. The moment the balkanization happened, the moment Russia actually USSR got collapsed, the entire thing actually went off. And what was the dominance basically for? One is the capitalist and the other one is the socialist or the communist reforms. What happens if there is social reforms? What happens if they are social reforms? Okay, let me ask you one thing. How many of you want to have a wonderful world with peace, tranquility and everything? You want to have a world where, you know, everyone is like, you know, loving each other, right? You want peace? But kind towards each other. Kind just makes it easier to do. Oh, you want a better world? Like Michael Jackson sang? <laughs> hmm? Better world for you and me? Let me tell you one thing. You can never have a better world. Okay? If better world is going to happen, then the things are going to be much more boring than anything can happen to you. What happens if you eat the same food every day? What happens if you see the same faces every day? What happens if there is, you know, like everyone hugging each other and saying that, thank you so much, I love you, you love me. Anarchy is important. Anarchy in the sense, you need disturbances. And those disturbances create a new world order. Okay? What we call as new world economic order. Okay? This entire thing of dominance was actually challenged by the Chinese, the USSR at a given point of time and now emerging countries like India. So we are challenging that particular dominance. But there were also dictators who actually challenged the dominance of the US. Saddam Hussein, Gaddafi, Idi Amin, okay, there are, are many people, Hugo Chavez, Fidel Castro, name it, and you can see actually the kind of, you know, uh, 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 the kind of, you know, uh, resistance that they had towards this particular country. What have they done? They did nothing, by the way. These countries are still existing, and they are much more powerful, and they are happy. Okay, what happens, you know, just because, fine, you know, we can say that, you know, none of the people in the North Korea are happy. How, do, how can you say that? How can you say that? Okay, we can't, you know, directly give a blank statement that, you know, this entire world is, you know, or maybe your particular country is, you know, very unhappy because of its leader. There are many leaders in African continent where you have dictators who have been ruling for the last 10 to 15 years. Okay, and one thing which the Americans always say is we need democracy as if democracy is the only building block for development. Okay? When you go to the international communications, there are two theories which we actually encounter. What are the other things? Anything? One is modernization theory and the other one is cultural dependency theory or we call it as dependency theory. Now these both are very, very wrong when it comes to the international relations and international communication. Why? Because what works in my house doesn't work in your house. Okay? The kind of development that I want or maybe you know I had in my country may not be replicated, may not be copied and you know you try to implement that particular thing. What happens? You will get doomed or you will be, there, there is a chance that you know it may be a failure. And that is what exactly happens. They try to say that if at all a country has to, you know, say that, you know, they are a developed country, the first thing that we think of is infrastructure. Does infrastructure mean that, you know, you are developed? Does having better roads, metro connectivity, airlines and everything, does it mean that you are developed when you have beggars on the street? Okay? Even America has beggars. Right? It's not that, you know, they are not beggars in the American country or maybe, you know, USA, they are beggars. Now, you can't say that they are developed. And you can't say that, you know, whatever you people are doing, we should replicate the same thing. And that is what the development theory actually talks about. This entire discourse at a given point of time, like copying the West and trying to implement the same ideas in the East, actually failed. Okay? This entire concept itself is a very wrong idea. People should be knowing what they are supposed to do, how they are supposed to do. It has to be depending on the local policies, okay? Local infrastructure, local governance is more important when you need to think about development. Okay, when it, this, this is the broader thing that, you know, I want to tell. But also, you know, when it comes to, you know, certain media, there's one thing that I want to highlight and I will shift to the other thing. 
How many of you know about the McBride Commission? Have you heard about McBride Commission? No? As a journalism students, that is the most important thing. Okay? The McBride Commission was established in the year 1980 and there was this particular book which they have actually put forward. Why did the McBride Commission came into existence in the first place? Okay? I'll touch the media part later. Remember this particular word, McBride. Okay? He is the one, he is actually the uh, 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 Irish diplomat and also, you know, a Nobel uh, laureate. He was actually made, you know, to look into the discrepancies or, you know, look into the inequalities that is actually happening in the information flow. Okay? Information flow. And then I'll come to this particular thing. The other thing which I'll talk to you about, give you the practical examples. Okay? How do you challenge this particular dominance of US? Or maybe, you know, the entire West. Can we do it and survive? Small countries can never do that. Can big countries do it? Yes? yes? Okay. Now, here is the thing. How many of you think that you are all equal? You both sitting side to side. Are you equal? No. But you pretend that you are equal. Right? Okay. Even if we say that, you know, this entire utopian world that we think of, you know, where everyone will be equal and, you know, everyone would be getting the same pay, everyone will be happy kind of thing. This will never happen because it is inbuilt, you know, it is inbuilt into our DNA that we will never accept someone else as equal. We have this dominance. We want to prove our dominance time and again. Okay. And that is what exactly happens even with the countries. Okay. It's not just about, you know, few communities, maybe, you know, whether it is a tribal community or some other community, but it also happens at the larger scale that is at the country's level. And each country wants to prove that they are more powerful and they can actually, you know, control the things. And once you have power, do you want to relinquish it? If power is given to you, do you want to just give it away? No one. Even when you are 80 years old or 90 years old, you still want to hang to it. There are few countries like, you know, who says that, you know, you have seen, you know, prime ministers in, you know, most of the Scandinavian countries who just come on a cycle, you know, do their work and, you know, go like an ordinary fox, right? Can that same happen in other countries? Can that happen in India? No, you need an entire convoy, you know, like, you know, 20, 30 cars, you know, moving at the back of you, trying to prove your dominance. What happens if you come in a single car? Are you not called the chief minister? Will you be not called the prime minister? Will you be not called the cabinet minister if you come in a single car? No, but you need to prove your dominance. And that is what exactly happens even at the international level. International relations is more got to do with how we try to deal with other countries on a regular basis. And that too, for your own self-interest. This is more got to do with your self-interest. Okay? You want to play safe. Okay? You want to be better than the other countries. And you want to prove your dominance at the global level. And US will never ever let that go. Okay? Forget about US. Even the European countries would never ever let that particular thing go. Who is actually dominating the South China Sea? It is the Chinese. They are bullying everyone. If they don't have power, suppose say for example, can they do the same thing with India? Okay? Can we bully Pakistan? Why? Because it's also nuclear power, we are also nuclear power. So, the balance is there. The power balance is there. What happens when you don't have power? You are being dominated by these countries. So the first realism, realism talks about protecting yourself. Realism talks that, you know, you better be prepared for the worst. Talk peace, be friendly, but prepare for the worst. And that is what exactly it talks about in the international relations. The second thing it talks about is, you know, the institutions. Okay? Institutions where, you know, we, we regard institutions as a better institutions for, you know, safeguarding the interest of, you know, not just one community, but the global community. Okay? You have the realism, you have the liberalism. It talks about basically believing in the institutions. Okay? I told you, I just gave you the example of United Nations. 
you have to believe in that particular thing but at the end of the day it is not going to fulfill your needs okay you may be having a great regard for it ultimately but countries doesn't accept certain things i'll give you one example afghanistan who created the taliban the us right who created the isis the us again okay because of the disturbances and so on in international relations we talk about more you know one is like you know being more powerful culturally politically and economically and the other thing when it comes to is the human rights they always pinpoint saying that you know you have been very cruel you have been you know cruel to the minorities and so on and so forth how cruel is the west with the other minorities you know when blacks go most of the afri americans or maybe you know majority of the people who actually go there the racism exists more in that particular countries than any other asian countries okay we treat other people as equal or maybe you know we try to you know be very reasonable with them you know we try to argue in a better way they don't even treat them like that they are treated like you know fourth class citizens there and even if you are a citizen you are on a day to day basis you are actually you know encountering racism on a regular basis and these guys talk about human right violations and these guys actually talk about human right you know uh, 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 things that are happening and you know it's like you know every time they say that you know there is so much of you know violence that is happening in jnk what is the kind of violence that you have done in the rest of the world no one questions that okay for for every now and then they actually release a report okay and this particular report is basically from the west can eastern countries also report uh, try to you know come up a report with a report and say that this is what your country is actually doing to the minorities this is what your con- country is doing to you know the other 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 religious people can we do this why can't suppose say for example if tomorrow russia china and india comes with a report saying that this is what your report this is what your human rights uh, you know violations are for the last 10 years under biden and under trump can we release a report we can but the thing is no one values it why because again it is controlled by the west whatever they say we have to believe but whatever we say they don't believe in it see the role okay and again who is controlling the media the entire west take the agencies top 5 agencies just name it reuters bbc cnn okay any other afp any other thing that you can remember journalism students ap associated press yeah who controls this these are the 5 6 7 by the way when you open the you know papers in india any newspaper any newspaper just check what is there in the down the report would be taken from reuters. ap reuters bbc cnn or you know some other thing why why can't you prepare your own report why is that you have to depend on these agencies because they have a global presence and what we try to do is when when i come to the media part we try to say that you know this is what exactly it is what happens if you don't publish that particular report no one is going to beat you right no one is going to beat you uh, sorry ramaji naidu is not there but it, no one is going to beat you know sakshi editorial board or maybe inadu editorial board or for that matter you know andhra jyoti or maybe you know telangana you know they are not going to come and beat you saying that you know why didn't you publish this it's just that we think that you know this has more credibility so it is better to publish this so that we will have more and more readers but the thing is we give credibility and you know much more authenticity to this particular news channels and news organizations and news agencies that is the worst thing and again who is actually controlling all these things it is again the global west it's like there is a complete divide between the north and south the global north and the global south that is what exactly the term we use now but otherwise you know it would be always the east and the west okay the orientalism you know towards the west but but let me tell you once again half of the problems are actually created by them them in the sense the west and they try to lecture everyone about what to do and they are countries who are actually challenging this particular dominance and let's go back to period when congress government was there okay irrespective of the governments you need to have a foreign policy and based on that foreign policy we are actually trying to engage ourselves with the rest of the world 
Now here is the thing. What happens when Congress was there? What happened exactly Congress was there? We were not that bold enough to counter the arguments or maybe you know counter the reports which are actually coming from the West. Under the BJP government, it was straight clear-cut instructions. Whether it was Sushma Siraj, late Sushma Swaraj, or maybe now the Jai Shankar. You have never, India never had a, such a powerful foreign office. Could actually say, if you are doing it, we will also do it. Please stop lecturing us. We know what we are supposed to do. Then the real thing comes into picture. And what is that? In the international relations, your country is first. Realism, first thing is, in the realism, it says that your country is first. Defend your country, make sure your country is more powerful in the international relations. And that is what Jay Shankar is actually putting, or maybe the BJP government is actually putting realism into practice, the theory into practice. Saying that we are not going to budge. We are going to give answers for you. They are a group of nations which will defend Israel to the core. Okay? Now here is the thing. There was a time when we were non-aligned. Okay? The entire NAM movement. This is where actually India gets its credibility, by the way. You know, we think that, you know, we are just rubbing the Nehru period ahead. But it was Nehru who actually started this particular thing. Not getting aligned towards the uh, USSR or the USA. Not the capitalist, not the capitalist, not the communist. We were saying that, you know, let us be, you know, free. And that is when the first NAM actually summit came. The Bandung conference actually came into picture. And then you have, you know, these five prime ministers like, you know, Nehru, you have Fidel Castro, you have Tito. These were the people who were at that point of time who actually came together and formed the non-aligned movement. You know what is, if non-aligned movement can actually challenge it, you know how many countries it would be? It would be something 100 plus countries which are part of the NAM. Out of 198 countries that we have, or you know, that is being officially registered or so on and so forth. 100 countries, if they say that we don't want to support you at a global level, things could be at a different level altogether in the international relations. We can actually dominate, but we don't dominate because at the end of the day, we have to protect our own interests right from the independence. Till date, Russia never left us, or we never left Russia. They were there in our thick and in our thin. The foreign policy, much of the foreign policy, whether it is Congress or whether it is the BJP government, they were aligning themselves with the Russians because they were helping us in everything, and especially with regard to military power. When we asked US, when we begged US, they simply rejected it. Okay? They try to create as many hurdles as possible so that India would not be militarily superior in the subcontinent. We ourselves propagate that, you know, we are the most peaceful country. How many of you believe that? Are we peaceful? No. Please, for God's sake, don't say that we are very peaceful. Then. We have to pretend, of course. At the global level also, we have to, you know, pretend that, you know, we love peace and so on. Hey. That's a different level altogether. I was just joking, I was just kidding. What my point is, we also been, you know, very practical in terms of our foreign relations, okay? Now, as you said that, you know, we have been there and we have been maintaining this particular friendship with Russia. As I said, even today, it's like, you know, we have, Jay Shankar said that, it's not me, okay? So that we always love to, you know, be with those, you know, friends who have been, you know, with us in the thick and thin. Okay, US is trying to, you know, becoming much closer and, you know, trying to influence us in a better way, but no. But even then, even now, they create hurdles. Okay, even for the technology. I'll give you one example and then I'll stop how actually sanctions work with the international relations. We all come together and if we don't like someone, if we think that, you know, that guy is actually dominating, we form a group and try to suppress or, you know, we try to, you know, crub that particular development in that particular country. And that is what these people actually try to do with the sanctions. Why do you impose sanctions? What is the reason for you to impose sanctions? Okay, when India went for the nuclear war, okay, sorry, sorry, nuclear test, you know, soon after the nuclear test, they have actually imposed sanctions. You remember the economic liberalization under Prime Minister? 
okay at a given point of time we even had to sell our reserves you know gold reserves in order to make sure that you know the the country actually works you know smooth or you know we don't have these imbalances fluctuations in the economy but here is the point here is the point like you know we never bowed down to that particular you know sanctions in fact we overcame the sanctions okay how did we overcame that particular sanctions by developing our own technology there was this particular thing which was supposed to help them you know russians were the people who always tried to launch our satellites before okay even before isro came into picture and we tried to you know start our own satellites it was always the russians it was always the russian places or the russian uh, you know space agencies that we actually used to launch our own satellite us was nowhere what was the first satellite which india used for the communication for the first transmission this particular satellite was called ats6 it was a american satellite the site experiment was actually carried out through ats6 satellite and after that we developed our own technology now here is the thing i'm i'm just coming back to the sanctions i'm just getting deviated with other things when 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 we were asking for a cryogenic engine so that you know we could our launch our own satellites us imposed sanctions us imposed sanctions like anything we were not able to do certain things for the next 3 years and what happened in between we were able to produce our own indigenous technology and we were able to launch our own insat satellite that is pslv was the one which actually first came into picture and then you have other thing you know now you have you know cryogenic engines and so on and so forth but this is what exactly it is when countries are actually developing you try to create hurdles for them and you don't want these particular countries to be dominant at a global level and in international relations all the ambassadors who are there you know trying to work out day in day out okay how many of you think that you know all those you know agencies that you know you have embassies right right and what do embassies actually do sit and enjoy what do the people in the embassy actually do if i say that you know half of the embassy staff is also spies do you believe it that is apart from the, you know the best relations that you know we also have we also have people who actually you know try to update the intelligence in the given country their own country saying that this is what is happening that is what is happening this is the political thing that is a you know cultural thing that is development you know we come up with everything we try to decode things and then say that how we are supposed to deal with russia how we are supposed to deal when when our prime minister actually goes to that particular country what are the things that we are supposed to put forward everything work out is actually worked out by indian embassies in different different countries or maybe you know these ambassadors who are actually you know protecting our interest sanctions have been hit like anything why is that only west imposes sanctions and who are these countries why do they import sanctions on us just to prove their superiority just to make sure your economy cripples just to make sure you actually suffer but is it suppose say for example i am the leader of this particular okay they are very angry with my decisions okay the us and the west is angry with my decisions and they want to punish me are they punishing me if you think that you know you are punishing me it's a very stupid thing you are actually punishing my people so it is the people who have been punished i may be you know countering you okay just because i counter you doesn't mean that you are supposed to impose sanctions and that is what happens the biggest or maybe the, the the one country there are actually three or four countries which are bombarded with sanctions or maybe you know you can actually check it it may be in thousands okay the first one it comes is russia the second is north korea the third is iran and you take the latin american countries you know all those countries which actually you know favor communism and you know socialism okay countries which doesn't listen to america. the west basically america those are the countries which have been imposed sanctions when you stop technology you are depriving people certain development things okay the basic things but here we talk about global peace development and so on and so forth dominance realism believing in the institutions is always good but 
And the other one, the last part, constructivism. It says that, you know, things are being constructed based on the social reality. Okay? But that social reality is also a constructed reality. Please try to understand that. Okay? So that argument actually doesn't fit when it comes to international relations. When we say that, you know, the, the last part, you know, there are certain things which are constructed based on the social reality. Now, who are the people who are actually constructing that social reality? You, me, and someone else, right? Even our reality is also been, again, you know, a constructed reality. And that is what exactly, it doesn't hold, you know, its ground. Because just because something has been constructed some time back, does it mean that, you know, we have to believe in it? Not necessary. It is a different thing altogether now. Okay? These theories are more important. And first thing, again, remember two things. Forget about the constructivism. Two things which play primarily or the theories which are much more important are the realism and the second one is the liberalism. You love institutions. Okay? We always believe that institutions are the one which actually safeguard. But they have to act. They have to perform. They have to prove that, you know, we are there to protect, you know, certain interests. I'll give you two examples and then stop with the, you know, this particular thing. I'll come back to the media. The United Nations and the International Court of Justice. Two institutions which we have very high regard. Okay? Now, the International Court of Justice says that the South China Sea belongs to all the countries. Or, basically, you can actually travel in the international waters. Okay? Is China adhering to that particular thing? Is China actually, you know, following the international relations? And this is the same country which actually lectures other countries about rules and regulations. Now, here is the thing. You know, the American soldiers kill so many people, but none of these particular soldiers can be actually dragged to the International Court of Justice. Why? Because they are not part of it and they don't believe in it. The Israel, which almost all kills, like, you know, so many people are being killed on a regular basis. Can you drag international, sorry, can you drag Israel to the court and then say what you are doing is wrong? Will the, will the Israelis or maybe, you know, the country believe and, you know, try to say that, okay, fine, we are sorry, we are not going to do that. Will they do that? No. Then what is the point of having these powerful institutions? These institutions have to perform. And when they perform, like you don't have so many disturbances that can actually happen. They are the first people to step in and say that, you know, you are supposed to stop. Now, here is the thing. Most of the countries, like, you know, Ukraine was a buffer zone. Ukraine was a buffer zone between the NATO and the Russians. Now, you take that buffer zone, what happens? It's like a direct conflict, like seeing eye to eye. Like, you know, Pakistan and Indian soldiers, you know, seeing eye to eye. But even there, you know, you have a buffer zone. For every country, you need a buffer zone. When you say that, fine, you know, at the same time, you can't blame Ukraine. You can't blame Ukraine because in realism, your interest should be the primary thing in the international relations. I want to safeguard my people, my interests first. So you say that I want to join EU, I want to join NATO. What is wrong in it? But the Russians were saying, please leave, you know, this particular country. Let it be as it is. Let the status quo exist. Everyone will be peaceful. We don't have to have, we'll go to war. America sneezes, the rest of the world catches cold. They get into war, the rest of us all suffer. And that is what exactly is happening. You are supposed to leave certain things as it is, so that it would be a better place. We all think that, you know, we should live in peace and so on and so forth. But at the same time, I also say that we need anarchy to create a new world. And that is what exactly is supposed to happen. One last thing, and I'll stop with the media. I said all the organizations, the top organizations are basically controlled by the West. Okay? You dictate. You are the people who are setting the agenda. You have this agenda setting theory, right? Who sets the agenda? You, me, public? Opinion leaders? How many of you think that opinion leaders set agenda? It's the media organizations. They themselves set the agenda. And they want one particular information to be passed on. Maybe, you know, 10 days, 15 days. And over a period of time, they will say that. And people tend to believe in that particular thing. I'll tell you one last example how things actually worked. Iraq war. Okay? Saddam Hussein. 
okay whatever it is i feel that you know he is a dictator fine let him be the dictator let him enjoy people were happy people were unhappy like we also happy and unhappy what's a big deal you say that you just want to you know destroy that particular country you want to loot resources you want to loot resources at that particular point of time us was not having enough oil reserves to be frank so the first thing that they did is to attack a country where you have a dictator who is actually challenging the dominance of us I and the west west what happened they went into a propaganda the media propaganda first thing what was the first thing that they actually made the entire world believe saying that iraq is actually producing weapons of mass destruction this was the first thing and you know what exactly they did time in day in and day out over a period of time for 6 months they actually published images of you know remote you know locations where you know it is like you know a cow shed or maybe you know some kind of you know dairy farm and other things they said these are the places where weapons of mass destruction are produced sometimes it may be a hospital or maybe you know a general building but the entire world believe why because it is published not by one agency but the entire western agencies saying that here here is the picture when you say when you show a satellite image and say that see this is what exactly the uh, iraqis are doing this is the place where actually they are producing weapons of mass destruction the world just believed in it at the end of the day when they attacked when they actually you know uh, demolished the entire infrastructure and the you know the regime or maybe you know the government what was the finding they There actually no know weapons of mass destruction okay when you read chomsky you know you really go through it and you know you understand how things were you know how actually american media actually works okay the other things i'll give you another example like you know you must have heard about the arab spring yeah okay the umbrella revolution right the arab spring was in the it started with tunisia okay then swept the entire middle eastern countries even you know at a given point of time saudi was afraid that you know it may actually you know they may also you know have to encounter such kind of things then you have the umbrella revolution or the hong kong revolution is also called as the umbrella revolution okay who gave the priority you know when you open the you know images these were the things the social media and other things who control this particular thing even your google algorithm if you pay your number will be the top one it's as simple as that when they want to destroy you know these are the things that they actually carry over a series of you know or maybe you know at times months and who who actually controls the media will be the most powerful chaps you control it you can change everything but do you think that it happens every time at a given point of time you know your lies would be exposed and the rest of the world would be knowing but what is the point what is the point by the time the world has been already destroyed that particular place is already destroyed the culture is destroyed the infrastructure is destroyed the people's lives are lost and we think that you know as i said you know agenda setting it's only few people who actually set the agenda and when we want our voices to be heard and i'll come back to mcbride this is the last thing i said you know 1980 i think it's one world many voices there is few thing that i just want to read uh how many of you read the un charter so as i said you know what does mcbride actually say nam nam which was at that particular point of time see the 40s till 60s was the most struggling period most struggling period for why because more and more countries got liberated okay most of the countries right from africa south america to east asia and in all the countries we are actually getting liberated at that particular point of time let me tell you at a given point of we think that you know we are banning certain you know uh, uh, reporters and you know we are banning certain uh, you know agencies even nehru actually banned nehru actually banned bbc at that particular point of time you know what happened at a given point of time we were not having so much of infrastructure 
even today much of the world doesn't have the kind of infrastructure that the west has that's the reason why again you know the dependency theory in international communication there are only two things which are very very important dependency theory and the modernization theory modernization theory you can actually straight away reject what works for me doesn't work for you dependency theory yes you know the 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 periphery is always dependent on the center it's like you know we begging the central government please give our own money back the center is the most powerful and the periphery is always at the hands of the or maybe you know at at the mercy of the center so this particular you know mcbright commission as i said you know the nam people actually started to question the things in the united nations when people question that you know the information flow is not proper or maybe it is not you know balanced that is when this particular mcbright commission has to come up and as i said you know the, at that particular point of time maybe you know around 30 countries which were together and said that you know this is not going to happen your information is you been flooded and you know our our news or maybe you know our stories are not been you know reflected in the global media or maybe you know for the rest of the world and that is one they question and here is this particular thing it was put up in the thing and it was never published by the way and this particular remote has this particular report has been never been implemented till date the macbride report it says promoting media pluralism and diversity is it happening even today oh to some extent because of you know the whatsapp the internet has changed a bit it is actually trying you know giving access to us you know to put our own stories to the rest of the world but even that particular thing is again you know curtailed you can't say that you know my story is reaching the rest of the world even you can have those gatekeepers and you know try to block that you know it's like you know chinese one word about you know chinese uh, you know president xi it would be censored and any word against xi would be censored so when you have people like that you know even in international relations or you know international media you also have something like that encouraging regional and local media development hey i'll ask you one thing uh, in general how many of you are from telangana and how many of you are from ap ap telangana ap just raise your hands okay can you remember the channels at that particular point of time which were dominant before telangana formation a9 mtv 5 all are from can you can you count the channels which are there now local channels including in karimnagar nizamabad adilabad okay local channels which have actually come up local newspapers which have actually grown up when you hold dominance and when you don't give them the liberty and this is what exactly happened you know you write your own story when it comes to certain things there are certain things which are supposed to be going free flow macbride commission in fact actually it's a, it's a wonderful report by the way it was very balanced and it want this particular you know united nations to implement it but as i said you know few countries from the west we told it saying that we are not going to implement this particular thing strengthening international cooperation and exchange it never happens okay addressing imbalances in global information flows does it happen even today as i said the moment you open the newspaper half of the information is only from these particular agencies if you want you can stop it it's just because you want more readers you just want to publish this particular things ap as i said you know associated press reuters stop this particular thing no one is going to beat you instead of that you know you give priority to your own you know uh, local stories or maybe you know regional or maybe the national things but we want to go to the international thing okay supporting media education and research so this is this is very good report in fact if there is any chance for you to read it read the macbride report which is a wonderful thing but this this particular report was never implemented and it never happened and as long as people who are actually controlling the media things would be very very difficult for us to have you know general information passed on from one person to another person but really to be frank you know there are certain revolutionary things which are actually happening at a large scale you have facebook you have uh, you know twitter you have you know whatsapp you have you know uh, uh, other other you know 
uh, applications where you can actually you know put your videos and so on and so forth which is actually in a way you know trying to revolutionize certain things like you know no one talked about umbrella revolution no one talked about you know the 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 arab spring until it sprang up in the facebook and it was a big thing and rest of the world actually you know try to follow it and they try to actually give some kind of moral support for these people but at the end of the day if the country and the monarch is powerful and if you are not going to you know give value to the institutions whether it is united nations or international court of justice or maybe you know doesn't listen to other countries nothing is going to happen it's like north korea i'll do my own thing okay i don't care about us it's like xi jinping saying that what us i don't care about us whatever i do is what i do that's it okay it's like you know someone else you know in iran saying that you know ayatollah khamenei says that this is what is going to happen everyone will wear hijab there ends the story but if well, the moment you value institutions then there is a positivity for us to you know at least there is a some kind of hope that you know things can actually change so two things realism and liberalism any In international relations these are the only things that actually work and whoever actually controls the media or whoever actually you know dominates the media it is their ideology day in and day out that actually comes out and we are just substitutes it's like you know we are just reading it consuming it and trying to ape it if you want you can stop it but the thing is you want to just follow your peers right if your senior does it you should also do it if your neighbor is wearing a very good jacket you should also buy it you know the moment you see it you will you will go to flipkart you go to amazon get it in the next day not necessary not necessary you don't have to do it but the thing is you always copy okay and we also want to say that you know i am also dominant force unless you have been touched otherwise you say that you know i am most powerful you show off and and this is what exactly happens you prove your dominance and day in and day out one thing i am saying anarchy is good take my word it is good it is good because it brings the change that is required in society in society at international level also you challenge the global dominance china russia and india the brics is actually today i'll tell you there was a time like you know we used to beg in front of the world bank most of the countries do right do you think that you know today most of the countries are going to the world bank sorry they are coming to the brics saying that you know please help us for our infrastructure for something else more and more countries want to be part of brics more and more countries want to challenge the dominance of the us dollar saying that you know it is better that you know we deal it at a local level there was a time when people appreciated globalization today countries are actually decoupling they don't want globalization in fact it is the other way around which is actually happening now deglobalization or decoupling more and more countries doesn't want to go to wto for the uh, for their own you know uh, what what we call call it as you know uh, contracts and renewals and so on and so forth it say that france and india let us have a bilateral you know treaty it's like you know free trade agreement between countries there was a time when everyone was part of the wto today more and more countries are actually like you know india has a lot of you know thing in the this is happening in the last 10 years by the way let me tell you more and more countries wants to have a free trade agreement it is better you and i deal it forget about rest of the world okay you impose tariffs i will also say that these are the my products and you give your own products let us decide rather than going to the wto and you know trying to go through this entire process let us deal you know our own business on a face to face kind of thing and that is what exactly is happening gone are the days of globalization gone are the days of you know international order where west was most powerful but not now not now in fact west is actually looking at other countries for moral support economic support okay and that is what exactly there was a time you know like i don't know to be frank you know iran and even in russia people would hide their genes under the burkas okay they were so much fascinated with that particular genes and so on. today you know it's like different thing you know if you want to you know give up certain things you can actually do that 
McDonald's, you know, at a given point of time, that was a huge thing. My point is, you don't need to, you know, encourage these, you know, institutions. If you want, you can say that nothing with that. You can be your own country, you can be more powerful and, you know, you can actually challenge this particular imperialism, the cultural imperialism and the other imperialisms that we actually encounter day in and day out. You can challenge these particular things. Thanks, guys. I stop. If you have any questions, I can just answer. Otherwise, I'm done. Sir, what do you think of the decline of the dollar? Will it, will it be as dominant as it was? Uh, no. No. In the coming days, it will not. In the coming days, it will not. Because what is happening is, as I said, you know, the more and more we have free trade agreements with the country. Like, say, for example, Russia. You know, it, it was not actually doing business for the last two years. It is not doing business in dollars. dollars. And moreover, they have actually stopped that particular institution. They have this particular Swift. Uh, mechanism where, you know, you actually deal business, right? So that is stopped for them. Is Russia failed? In fact, it is doing much better than the rest of the European countries. Why? It was able to deal business at a local level. I'll give you one example. When Iran was imposed with sanctions, and we were also being imposed with the sanctions. Like it was a give and take. You know, there was this barter system. Okay, you give me oil. I'll send you all the foods that is required for the people there. So that is how we actually managed. And today, that exact thing is actually happening. If you are imposing sanctions on certain countries, countries are actually, you know, jumping the gun and saying that we still do the business and we know how to do the business. It's like barter system. You provide us with this, we'll provide with you, you know, certain things. Like the other things, you know, if, if uh, China is actually, you know, trying to circle India, we also been, you know, trying to circle China with, you know, other things, you know. If they can, you know, try to divert our business, we are also in a position to divert their business, okay. We are actually trying. One, one last example with the media. If a country's economy has to grow, what is the first thing that you need? Is the media which gives a positive image about that particular country. Okay? At a given point of time, China was like, you know, an apple for them. Okay? For the rest of the world, it was an apple. Like, you know, you have cheap labor, you have everything, you have resources and so on and so forth. For the last 20 years, the entire Western countries have actually dumped their infrastructure, sorry, their own money into China. When they realize that, you know, it is like, you know, Things are not happening and after the COVID, when they realize that, you know, their businesses have been, you know, hampered or maybe, you know, they have to close down, they are actually giving a negative. Again, remember, it is the global media which is actually giving a negative picture of China. The same media which actually promoted business is today doing the other way around, asking, you know, countries and companies to invest money in Indonesia, maybe Vietnam, maybe, you know, India, maybe, you know, some other countries. So you can just imagine how the, even the economy is being, you know, suppose I give a very rosy picture about, you know, a particular country. That's it. You think that, you know, it is better for us to invest in that particular country. And that is what most of the investors actually did. They invested in China. Today, when the entire global media is actually talking about negative things about or reporting negative things about China, you are taking that particular things and putting it in, in India. Maybe it will help us for the next 10 years. But what after that? If you don't, you know, sustain it. You need to sustain that particular thing. That is also important. Maldives. You know the example of Maldives, right? It's as simple as that. And in international relations, it's more like, you know, what are you going to give me? If you are not going to give me, I am going to your enemy. It's like, you know, Sri Lanka saying that, you know, okay, if you don't give, then I am going to China. Then we would be scared because we have our own enemy in the backyard, trying to, you know, keep an eye on everything that we actually do. So the first thing is, make sure that your neighboring countries are with you on the same board, so that, you know, you can actually deal with them. And also, you know, get as much as business as possible. If you don't do that, it's like Belt and Road Initiative. You must have heard about it. And you have heard about the stories. There is this particular country called Laos. Okay? Whatever they earn in that particular country, that would only go to the interest of the China. Or the money that they have actually taken, country Laos. Okay? Whatever the amount that they actually have now, 
or whatever they actually earn, it would be going only in the interest for the money that they have actually taken from China. And who are the countries which have actually taken money? Bangladesh, Sri Lanka, Maldives, Nepal, Pakistan. It's like 50 billion. Okay, the Gwadar port. Okay, what is what is this? Pakistan Economic Corridor. Okay, and you have many countries in our African countries. Can we do the same business? What happens if India also does the same thing? Do we have a reputation like that, you know? It's like no one treats Chinese like a better way. At least they give some kind of importance to us in the world stage. The Chinese can't have the same thing. We can't deceive. For how many days you can actually... In fact, none of the agreements that the China has with the countries, they never get published in the international forums. It's like secret dealings. So that is what exactly happens. We do business at a balanced level, at a very balanced level. Good that we have very confused finance ministers. That's <laughs> like, you know, don't give so much to that. You know, every finance minister was like very careful about how much they are supposed to invest, how much suppose they, you know, no more, no more freebies. Okay, don't give. You know, take out this socialism thing. You know, but there are people who argue that you know it is good that you know sometimes you know freebies are supposed to be given. That's a different you know argument altogether. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, thanks. Yeah. So I thought I thought I'd just read something and you know. Uh, thanks again, guys.